skill you have, you didn't get it on your own. Just let me tell you. Whatever skill you have, you did not develop that. No matter how smart you are or how ingenious you are, you didn't do it. Okay? It came from God. He gave these men skill, and they were skilled craftsmen to know how to develop and how to, especially those that did the, the curtains, how they did the curtains in the temple to put, to weave gold and purple thread into the curtains. It took skill, especially when you're dealing with fabric like linen, because some linens can be sturdy and some linens can be, you know, loose. But they were skillful in designing the temple. I just want you to know just how great and awesome your God is. When you just look, when you look at yourself, you're just not a mere man or woman, but you were crafted, <laughs> handmade, skillfully by God. So when you look at yourself, and remember the scripture in Psalms 139, how it said that you were beautifully and wonderfully made. Every day when you look at yourself, you say, man, God, you did an awesome job with me. <laughs> because you didn't do it on your own. He did it. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Come on. Y'all, y'all, y'all not, not there. <laughs> but no, we didn't do it. We can't take credit for anything. No. We can't. Because God is he's just amazing. Amen. Wondrous are his works. And he's performing them and he's doing them daily. So we, we don't need to, the life that we live and the life that we have is a precious life. So don't take it for granted because we are only going to pass this way one time. Make the most of your life. Enjoy your life. Amen. Glory to God. Y'all ready to sing? Hallelujah. But before we sing, we got to offer some praise to God. Before we sing. And we, the names have already been called out for these families that need prayer. And Pastor, if it's okay with you, can we just pause and just lift up prayer for these people? Because when we put them out there in the atmosphere, because I believe Holy Spirit is already here. And when he shows up, he shows up to do a work. These families, they need, they need us to lift them up today. They need us to lift them up. So can we just stand as we go to the throne of grace? Glory to God. Because if you may not feel like you need God, I need him today. I need him each and every moment, every second. I need him because I don't know what's around the curve. I don't know what's ahead of me, but God knows. So we're just going to go into prayer and then we're going to move on. Hallelujah. 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 Oh God. Hallelujah. You got faith in the first. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I just want to come thank you, God, for your goodness and your mercy. For your grace that you've shown upon us, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For allowing us to stand where we stand today, God. No strength of our own. We just came to say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah for your mercy. Thank you for your faithfulness and your loving kindness you've shown toward us this very day. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, the name that has gone up before you. So many, God, so many needs, but God, your ear has been open to the mind of your people. Lord, we lift them up. Hallelujah. There are needs, God, people that need healing in their body. Hallelujah. Those families that are going through bereavement, God, we pray right now that you will bring comfort, that you will bring peace, God, that you will bring strength to them, God. Comfort them with the comfort, Lord, that you have been comfort with. Father, we thank you right now, God, for those who names have been called that are going through sickness, disease, turmoil within their body. God, we come today to learn that you are the bomb in Gilead. God, you are able to heal all manner of sickness and disease. And God, we thank you because you 
know, because right now, I just want to lay out. Hey. Because I'm telling you, God is just, he's so awesome. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We're going to keep moving. We're going to try it. Brother Corey. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What we rehearse. Yes. That's going to take us on. Amen. Glory to God. Because how many know how wondrous is the name of the Lord? Amen. But the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The scripture says the righteous run into it and they are safe, right? Yes. Woo! So y'all gonna help us sing this song. Amen. Glory yes. to God. Hallelujah. Come on, praise team.
wonderful hallelujah. Come on, once again, let's put your hands together and bless that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. This is a sound. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But it sounds like to me. Somebody. Somebody was spending some time. In the Uh, of a phone call I got earlier this week. Uh, someone was inquiring about our praise team and, and them being on a, uh, a program. So after hearing y'all this morning, <laughs> I'm going to call him back and say, oh, yes, I'm here. I'm going to let them know, amen, that our praise team is great to be spread abroad. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Hallelujah. It's a privilege and an honor just to be here this morning, just Amen. to hear, Amen. The, the, the praise, the worship going up, and, and also to be able to participate with that this morning. I just thank the Lord for all of you. Hallelujah. I'm going to be glad to be here this morning. Amen. Praise God. I didn't, I didn't hear it. Amen. All of it, but. But being the offer that you can hear certain, I heard certain parts of it. But uh, the di the dynamic word of teaching this morning Jesus. by Amen by our uh, instructor or uh, our teacher this morning, Minister McCray. Thank God for him uh, doing such an awesome job. And, and, and I'm telling you, I can see God stretching you. So, Amen. I know you're a little uncomfortable right now, but He's stretching you for a purpose. Amen. Praise God. And I thank God for the strength. Look at the neighbor. I thank God for the strength. I thank God for the strength. Yeah, I thank God for the strength. Hallelujah. Meaning, amen. He knows that there is more in you that is presently being on display. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Um, I'm, uh, I know I'm not going to finish this work this morning, um, but I want to I wanna start it. Uh, but I, I, oh my God, turn on to you. This word here is so powerful and it's so meaningful. And it's like the Lord just, it, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, it was like he just opened up some things to be in the verses uh, and chapters, amen, that I never saw before. I didn't know I read it, but I didn't know the meaning of it and what it represented. Amen. So this morning, uh, I want you to let's go to the book of Judges, uh, chapter number. If you look at my Jackie Parker, please, man. I'm giving you a glass. I appreciate it. Um, we're going we to talk about, we're going to start reading from the book of Judges. Chapter number six, but I want to, before I begin reading, I want to do something of an introduction of this, this book, if you will. Um, when you look at the book of Judges, the book of Judges comes after uh, the book of Joshua, and Joshua was you can find this in chapter number two of the book of Judges. Joshua was the last uh, leader of Israel after they came out of Egypt. He was the last leader uh, of the people of Israel. He brought them out. Uh, he brought them across the Jordan. He uh, fought against the people of Jericho and Ai and all of those enemies of Israel. And in chapter 2, we read, you're going to find, when you read it, I'm not going to read it, but I need you to go back and look at it. Uh, Joshua, the Bible said that Joshua died. And when Joshua died, um, and all of that, and the scripture says, and all of those of that generation, the people that were of Joshua, Joshua's 
generations. When all of them died, there was no leader. There was no one that were willing to take the responsibility of leading the people of Israel. And the scripture says when there was no leader, uh, all of the people, they did what was pleasing in their own eyes. Amen. Because there was no one leading them and there was no one uh, hearing, I wouldn't say they weren't hearing from God, but there was no one in front of them exemplifying, amen, the will of God before them. And therefore, when everyone starts, uh, they started thinking and believing, uh, the Bible said, there is a way that seems right unto a man, but the way that will lead to destruction, right? So these people, amen, they, they started believing their own personal uh, gospel, if you will. And they began to do whatever pleased them. It didn't matter what the Ten Commandments that Moses wrote prior to them. It didn't matter to them anymore. The only thing they were concerned about, what can I do to gratify me? They had no, they had no concern about what God thought. And uh, from chapter 2 through verse number 6, uh, because there was no leader, the Bible said that the people began to uh, worship idols. They went into idolatry. Uh, they began to worship the gods of Baal and Balaam. Amen. And when they began to do that, God would allow certain uh, adversaries or certain enemies would they do we permit them or allow them to come in, amen, and bring uh, devastation, they would come and bring uh, destruction to the people of Israel, then the people of Israel, they would go and they would cry out to the Lord, amen, and the Lord would, amen, set forth, set forth a judge, and the judge would come and lead them periodically, amen, and as soon as the Lord delivered them out of that thing, they fall right back into another thing, amen. Uh, I think it was a, 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 a total of about four to five judges uh, before we get to uh, chapter six that God had to come before the people. They weren't necessarily leaders or they weren't necessarily judges, amen. But God just, you know, he just had his hand on someone that would listen to what he had to say and they would, amen, do what God told them to do and bring deliverance to the people, but then as soon as God gave them the victory, the people would just go right back into the same state. But in chapter number six, what we're going to begin reading, uh, when I sat down on Monday, on Wednesday, uh, and I began reading this, and, and I'm telling you, the Lord just began to unfold this word to me and, you know, tell me, speak to me, about the different meanings of the names and what the names represent and uh, where they uh, originated from and how all of this came about. And it just, I'm telling you, it just took me on a scriptural chase and I just started going through scriptural verses trying to you know, find the things and put the things down and the Lord just began to, just to reveal to me that nothing just happened on its own. Nothing just came up, comes about just so there was a reason uh, behind things that happening even in our life today. Amen? Okay. Uh, and, and Judges chapter number 6. Judges chapter number 6. I'm going to read and then I'm going to pray because I'm going to need prayer this morning and I need you to really pray for me because uh, this is all I'm telling you all. I'm not exaggerating. Exaggerating, brother. Whenever, I, whenever we go through this, we're going to see some things that we I don't, maybe not, you may have already got it, but I call it later. Um, but the thing the Lord showed me. In Judges chapter number six, uh, beginning at verse number one, I'm going to skip over to uh, some other verses I want to hit because I want you to get it, okay? Amen. Uh, the people of Israel did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord gave them into the hands of the Midianites for a span of seven years. Okay, I want you to underline the word Midian. And the hand of Midian overpowered Israel 
And because of Midian, the people of Israel made for themselves, listen at this, they made for themselves dens that are in the mountains and the caves and the strongholds. For whatever the Israelite planted, you need to pay attention to verse number three. Amen. For whatever the Israelite planted crops, the Midianites and the Amalekites, amen, and the people of the east would come up against them. They would encamp against them and devour the produce of the land as far as Gaza and had no substance in Israel, excuse me, yeah, and leave no substance in Israel and no sheep or ox or donkey, for they would come up with their livestock and their tents. They would come like locusts in numbers. Both they and their camels could not be counted, so that they laid waste the land as they came in. The Israelite was brought very low because of million. The people of Israel cried unto the Lord. When the Lord, no, verse 7, when the people of Israel cried unto the Lord on account of the Midianites, the Lord, listen now, the Lord sent the prophet to the people of Israel, and he said to them, Thus said the Lord, the God of Israel, I led you up from Egypt and brought you out of the house of slavery, and I delivered you from the hands of the Egyptians and from the hands of of all who oppressed you, and drove them out before you, and gave you their land. And I said to you, I am the Lord your God. You shall not fear, listen, you shall not fear. That word fear there means not, not be afraid of, but you shall not <laughs> give reference to the gods of the Amorites in whose land you would dwell, but you have not obeyed me. You shall not give reference to worship the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell, but you have not obeyed me. I'm going to stop reading in that chapter 6, but then I'm going to jump over, and then I'll, I'll, this will all make sense. Uh, jump over to chapter 7, verse number 15. I want to start from 15. And, and, and I'm going to let you know the story of Gideon. I know the story of Gideon. I'm, I'm laughing at it, but I want, to, I want to bypass that because if I go into that, it's going to take, it's going to take some time that I need. Um, and as soon as Gideon heard the telling of the dream and the interpretation, he worshipped and he returned to the camp of Israel and said, Arise, the Lord hath given the host of Midian into our hand. Then I want to go to chapter number, uh, oh Lord God. Chapter number eight. Eight, uh, verse number 18. Number 18. Then the Lord said to Ziba, number, then he said to Ziba and Zalm Manuah, Where are the men whom you killed at Tabor? They answered, As you are. So were they. Every one of them resembled the son of a king. Okay? He's, he's speaking, these two men, they are speaking to Gideon here. He says, as you are, so were they. Right? Every one of them resembled the son of a king. They were referring to Gideon's two brothers brothers that uh, Zabuna and Ziba killed. I want you to look at what he said concerning uh, Gideon's brother. They were as you are. They were as you are. Meaning they look like the sons of a king. That's important. Now I want to go back to chapter number six. Uh, when we look at chapter number six, we know what was happening because we just read it. We read how 
the, the Midianites, let me tell you who the Midianites uh, were. The Midianites were the Midian is or was the son of Abraham that he had with Keturah, the wife that he married after Sarah died. Midian uh, was one of the sons that, you know, I just stated, that Abraham had from her. And Ishmael, or the Ishmaelites, were, or Ishmael were the son that uh, Abraham had with Hagar. When Joseph, Jacob's son, Joseph, uh, were being put, was being put in the tent by his brothers, uh, it was the Ishmaelites and the Midianites that came and they bought Joseph and then they sold Joseph. They bought Joseph from his brothers and they sold Joseph into Egypt to Potiphar. And I brought all of that in to bring this in. I want you to see, amen, that the people that was in bloodline uh, relation with Joseph and with the Israelites, they were the people that was bringing the pressure and the oppression upon the Israelites. It wasn't a foreign people. It wasn't a people that had no connection to uh, the people of Israel. They were people that had bloodline connection to them. Amen. But when you look, I'm going to go there, but when you look where the oppression comes from, it came from people that he knew yeah. or people that he was connected to. And when you look a little further, amen, at the Midianites and what the and the spiritual uh, meaning of the Midianites' name, uh, what it really means, amen, it means poverty. It means poverty. The Midianite, the spiritual, uh, one of the spiritual uh, civilization of the name of uh, Midian is uh, poverty. And when we read in verse, from verse number uh, 1 through verse number uh, 10, we saw, amen, when uh, the Midianites, amen, when they came and surround, glory be to God, when they surround the Israelites, we read that for seven years, for seven years, the Midianites, amen, they, they were uh, nomadic type people, meaning that they, uh, they didn't have a stationary place to live, or they didn't have a town or a city that they lived in. They were people that were migrating from place to place, amen. And the Bible said they were large in numbers, not only in, in men, but they were large in cattle. They were large in camels and oxen and all of those things. And every time, glory to God, every time uh, when it was harvest time, and then the Bible we just read that they would come in and they would bring the host of their animals, their camels, their donkeys, and their herd. They would bring it, it, it would break it upon the Israelite and it would they would eat up all of the increase that the Israelite were supposed to have. Meaning that every seed that the Israelite sold, amen, the enemy, which is the Midianites, the Midianites would come in and they would devour, amen, the seed or the increase that was supposed to come, glory be to God, unto the Israelites. Does that sound familiar to you? Amen. Sometimes I like to seem like, glory be to God, every time it look like I'm about to have increase in my life. Amen. It looked like something would happen or something would occur. Amen. When it was time for me to reap, it looked like someone else would get into my into my field or into my bank account, into my savings account, and they would steal it before I get my hand on it. Can anybody, praise God, agree with that? Amen. You yeah. got to understand, amen, 
that there is a Midianite spirit that's yet in operation among the people of God. Amen. It looked like every time you want to increase, every time you get a new job, glory be to God, it doesn't matter what that job is paying annually or paying per hour, every time you get an increase, amen, on your hourly wages, and you say, oh, Lord, I'm about to come up out of this situation now, and before you know it, glory be to God, it's just like things just go haywire. You can't, you can't understand why this happened. You don't know why it's happening, but you say to yourself, I don't know why it's happening, but then the devil reason for why it's happening. And then, but anyway, glory be to God, then if you can't seem to figure out no why it is that every time it's time for me to increase, instead of me increase, it's look like I'm decreasing. I look like I'm getting more seed in my hand, and every time it look like I put more seed in the ground, praise God, I can see my harvest, but I can never reap my harvest. Glory be to God. There was a Midianite spirit in operation. And the spirit of the Midianite, the Bible declares, amen, in chapter number uh, 7 and 8, that there were four men in particular, amen, that it mentioned, amen, concerning uh, the, the, the Israelites and the people of the East. And then the Bible said there was a man, but there were two princes by the name of, glory to God. Their names were uh, Oreb. <laughs> Oreb mean, amen, his name means, listen at, listen at this now, Oreb name means, amen, of this raven. Raven, his name means raven. A raven is a type of a bird. Uh, a raven is a bird, and the nature of that raven bird, or the nature of that bird, it is, glory be to God, we used to call it back in the day, a crow. And I can remember when my dad used to put him in the field whenever he would plant his garden. Amen. He would put what they call a scarecrow in the field to keep away the raven and the bird. Why? Because that particular type of bird, that bird will go into the field. Once you put your seed into the ground, I don't know how that bird will find that seed, but that bird, go to God, that bird will go into that field, dig up the seed out of the ground before the seed can even begin to take root. It will begin to devour the seed. And that was the nature of amen, uh, that particular bird, Oreb. His name means, amen, he was, a, he was a scavenger. Amen. That particular bird, what it would do, amen, and also, amen, whenever it, whenever it sees or whenever it finds the nest of another bird, that bird, amen, the raven would go, amen, before the, before the, uh, what do you call it, amen, before the bird hatches the egg. That's what you call it, that's what you do, right? Amen. Before it hatches the egg, the raven would go and destroy the egg to keep the, listen, to keep the chickens, amen, from being born. Yeah. That sounds to me, amen, what the Bible called in uh, John chapter number 10, but the thief come up to do what? To steal, kill, and do what? And to destroy. So in other words, amen, Orab, amen, he was one of the prince of that time, amen, and he was, listen, his nature and his, his ways about him was that the minute I see you trying to go up, amen, and it's my responsibility to destroy everything that you are trying to accomplish. Amen. Every seed that you sow every time I see you, amen, giving your time and your offering in the offering, you made up in your mind, I'm going somewhere with this. You made up in your mind that I'm going to sow into the kingdom of God. But that raven, praise God, because he's a thief, he would cause habit to begin to take place. He would cause things, hallelujah, outside of the church to begin to happen. So the people say, well, you know what? I can't pay my time to this. Because I gotta take care of that. I can't give my offering today because I know and then that 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 something else is coming up and he will just keep you in a flux. He will just keep you to the point you wanna do what's right, but because you haven't yet realized who you're dealing with, you don't know how to attack it. So what do we do? You will say, Well, I'm not gonna pay it today, I'll give it next time. But all how many of you know this morning, amen, that for the time you to do it again, you ask God, go be God, something else will happen. He, and what he's doing, hallelujah, he is stealing from you, and you're not aware of it. It's not still being stolen in the church, but it's being stolen before you even bring it to the church. Go to God. It's the raven spirit. It's the nature of a raven. That's how. That's why, hallelujah, when there is no seed sown, there is no harvest to reap. Yeah. 
And that's why we find ourselves sometimes glory be to God. When Lord God, we're praying and asking the Lord to give us increase. God said, I would to give you increase, but you ain't putting no seed in the ground. All right. You're not putting any seed in the ground. That's why you're not getting no increase. I want you to repeat after me. Say, Lord, Yeah. 
and then they were sacrificed, they would have intercourse, amen, in front of this image, amen. And what they would do whenever the young child, amen, they would take this child, amen, and they would sacrifice the child to Baal. Right. They would sacrifice the child to Baal. Why did I brought all of that in? Amen. I brought it in, praise God, for the simple reason to let you know that when God tells you to get rid of a thing, mm. when he tells you to get rid of a thing, even though you can't see it, it don't make no sense to you. There are people that are attached to you, and you think, man, this is my boy, this is my roadie, this is my, this is my girl. We go, you know, we, we do things together, but they're worship. They're, they're, they're worshiping a different God. They, they are worshiping someone, amen, glory to be a God, that, 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 that do not know your God. They don't, they don't understand, glory to God. They don't understand who you worship. I you going to worship what you can't see. Are you going to worship someone, amen, that you can't even speak to, amen, you can't even talk, amen. But then you, on the other hand, you need to ask them, how can you worship something that you made? How can that thing become your God? How can an image that you made uh, with your hand, that you created out of your own mind, and now you can bow to a thing? But how is it, amen, that the people of God, amen, we get to the place in our life that we, we begin to, amen, amen, to take on, amen, the spirit of idolatry. We begin to take on the mindset, amen, meaning that, amen, I don't really uh, have to do it the way how the generation before me did, amen. And the Bible said, amen, they begin to, amen, participate in worship that they were not accustomed to. They begin to uh, participate in worship glory in God that was our self gratifying. They begin to gratify the flesh and make them feel good, amen. And made them, amen, praise God, hallelujah. It made them acceptable in the land in which they were. And God didn't want them, hallelujah, to become uh, acceptable in the land and where they were. But what God wanted them to do, he wanted them to destroy them and get rid of them because I wanted to establish you as a nation, praise God, so that you can be a nation like no other nation on the earth. And glory be to God, hallelujah. And the Lord said in chapter, oh uh, God, hallelujah, the, the, in chapter number two, that that was a generation, hallelujah, that they did not know God. That's why they were led into captivity. That's why they were led into bondage. Because they didn't know God, and they didn't seek to know God, and God allowed them to be, hallelujah, to be led into captivity or under the hand of the Midianites, the Moabites, and the Amalekites, and all of the other kinds of and, and, and therefore, amen, they got to the place amen, that they began to forget about God and all they wanted to do was to have a good time. They wanted to be entertained. They wanted to, oh my God, when the, when the morality of a nation, when the morality of a nation, hallelujah, exceeds the desire for God, that nation is going down. I want to say that again. Whenever the morality, the, immor the immorality, the immorality of a nation becomes more exalted than the God that created the being, that nation is going down. There is no way going to be the God, hallelujah, that you can participate. And, what, and oh my God, when you look at the scripture, the first thing that dealing with immorality It deals with, amen, sexual activity. Mm. It deals with orgies. It deals with, amen, profane, amen, indulgence of the people. It deals with not acknowledging God and considering God, if you go to Romans chapter 1, because they knew not God, God turned them over. Meaning that the defense that was there, God removed the defense that he had. He allowed the enemy to have his way. Because the people, hallelujah, they refused to acknowledge God in their own mind. Hallelujah. And you say, well, what does that have to do with poverty? Have you ever noticed? Uh, when there is a stronghold of poverty, there also is a, please, I don't want to think about it, but there
there also is a strong hold of immorality that takes place. When there is no leader, when there is no example for the people to look at to come up out of that, everybody begins to participate in the same thing. Occasionally there is one or two that comes out. But on the whole, on the whole, everybody pretty much, amen, remains in the same state. Why? Because there is not enough of people that overcoming the midnight spirit. Jesus. There is not enough people, amen, that begin to seek the face of God. And I'm not saying everybody, I'm not saying they're bad people. I'm saying, amen, because they don't understand what they're dealing with. They think it's about economics. They think it's about money. No, it's the spirit that you got to deal with. I don't care how often you get an increase. I stated this earlier. I don't care how much of a raise you get. If you don't know how to handle what's in your hand, if you don't know where to put it, if you don't know how to store it, first of all, before you put it in the ground, before you put it down, you got to put it up. Before you put it down, you got to put it up. What do I mean? You got to lift that seed up before God and present it to God. I said, Lord, in the name of Jesus, this is my seed. Before I sow it, Lord, I'm presenting it to you. I pray now, Father, in Jesus' name, that the power of this seed that you have placed in my hand, I pray that it breaks the power of the midnight spirit that's been playing in my family for years. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I say in Jesus' name, no raven, no praise God, wolf, no destructive force will be able to, to prevent my increase from coming to me. Amen. Did y'all get that? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. They were praying seeds, but they were offering up their seed to God. They were just putting it in the ground and just assuming that the process of nature was going to take place. Yeah, it took place, but there was no anointing for increase on that seed. Hallelujah. And Jesus said, meaning that they, they put the seed in the ground, but there was no spiritual protection of the seed. Your money was a sown in a, in, a, in, a, in a church. And if that church is a church that's ordained by God, and the people, amen, that operate in the church, they do right by you, praise God. That seed that you have sown in the ground, praise God, that seed has spiritual protection over it. Meaning that, listen, meaning that increase is destined for you. Do you ever hear what I'm saying? Increase is destined to you if you lift your seed up to God and you present it to God and you begin to speak the word of God over the seed that you sow. That, in, that seed is destined for increase. I don't care what time of prevented, God has protected that seed even the growth of that seed, even the, listen, even the increase of that seed, and even down to the harvesting of that seed, that seed is protected by God. Listen, it is God's responsibility. Paul said it this way. He said, Paul, Apollo, water, but what? Yeah, yeah, but give God to get the increase, right? That didn't go right. One water and one sower. But God give the increase. That's it. What am I saying? And I ain't saying, but I gotta put it. There were two old men in this that I wanted to touch up. You know what I'm saying? Thank you much for getting it. I'm not, there's something I want to get about getting, but getting is, I don't, we know the story of a getting in mighty man of God. I, I don't want to touch that. I, I, I want you to understand what you're dealing with, the enemy. Uh, you need to understand the enemy that you're dealing with. There was the other man name was Zeba, Z E B A H. Zeba and Zalmuna, they were the kings over the two princes, <laughs> Oreb and Zeb. Uh, Zeba. The meaning of his name means victim 
or victimized, refuse protection and sacrifice. That's the meaning of Zalmuna, I'm sorry, Ziba's name. Have you ever noticed a lot of times when people uh, they're in poverty, they always look at themselves as being victims they always look at themselves as being victims. Uh, why did this happen to me? Um, I, 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 look like I can't win for losing. Mm -hmm. uh, people always taking advantage of me. Uh, the system causing me to be like this uh, or something is always playing the role of a victim, and it's it's it's, because it's a mentality. It's your mind. It's you are developing the, the 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 mindset of a victim. That you're always being victimized by someone. You are always the one that's on the altar being sacrificed. You are always the one. Amen. You at the you at the the, the bottom of the totem pole. You, you can't ever think of seeing yourself up beyond, beyond you giving a sacrifice, but no, you always see yourself as the one that is the sacrifice. And God says, no, get rid of that victim mentality. Stop blaming other folks for where you are. Yeah, other people may have called you to be there, but God said that you will begin to seek me. He said, I will bring you up out of your state of degradation. <laughs> I will bring you up. I will lift you up. I will listen. I will set your feet on a solid place. Some of us, our lives that look like we are in, we are in quicksand. We're moving. There's a lot of activity. But that you're not moving forward. Look, like the more you step, try to step forward, the further you go back. Hallelujah. Stop being a victim. Stop considering yourself a victim and begin to rebuke that spirit that's planted in you. In Jesus' name. Don't you know you have the power to do so? That was the problem with Gideon. Gideon had the power the whole time, but he didn't know who he was. The other king, Zalmuna. The meaning of his name is a shadow or an image of the spirit of idolatry. Meaning that, amen, he presents himself to be something that he's not. Mm. He presents himself to be strong, but he's not strong. The thought it. It presents itself as to be all powerful, but he's not all powerful. It presents himself as a shadow of something great, but in reality, a shadow is just an image of something else. A shadow is just an image. It's not real. As soon as the sun arrives, a moon, and listen, it takes something else for a shadow to exist. You don't hear what I'm saying? It takes something else for a shadow to exist. And once that thing that causing that shadow to exist is removed, then there is no more shadow. Don't hear what I'm saying? Glory to God. As long as that sun is at a particular place on an ant, on an ant mound, depending on the positioning of the sun, that ant mound can look like a humongous hill for you to climb. But as soon as you walk on that ant hill and kick it over, that shadow has just disappeared. Why? Because the thing that created the image is no longer in existence. I'm afraid I'm about to say this. Amen. Don't you mistake a shadow for something that you have to deal with. All you have to do is just reposition yourself or get rid of the thing that's opposing you and that, that the shadow is no more. Glory to God. Once you reposition yourself in God, 
The Bible says that uh, that Gideon, he was in the, he was in the, uh, what do you call it, place? He was on the threshing floor. He was threshing wheat on breaking the sand. He was on the floor threshing wheat, separating, listen, he was separating the grain from, what do you call it, the shelf? What is it? Yeah, yeah. The, the, the grain from the shell. And when it did that, amen, the wind would blow, amen, and the wind, because of the how he's doing it, amen, the, 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 the seed would fall in one place, and then the, the shell would grow in another place. But while Gideon was doing this, the Bible said that an angel of the Lord appeared to him and began to speak to him and said, Hail, you mighty man of valor. Jacob looked at him and said, You talking to me? You calling me a mighty man of valor? And he said, Yeah. And he began to speak. And Jacob began to speak to the angel. He said, Well, if God is with us, why is it, amen? Why is it that everything that my forefathers told us or my ancestors told us about the God of Abraham, why is it that we are not experiencing any of it? Why is it that we are not reaping the benefit of being an heir to the promises of God? Why is it, pray God, if you're telling me that God can do this and God has done these things before, why is it that he's not doing it now? Why is it that God is allowing the enemy, praise to God? Why is it that God is, God is allowing the enemy, praise God, to oppress us? And the Lord began to speak to Gideon. First thing he said to Gideon, he said, first of all, I need to tell you who you are. Gideon said, well, I'm the, you, you call me a mighty man of God? How is it that I am from the, the tribe, the smallest tribe among all the tribes of Israel? How is it that you call me a mighty man of valor and I am the least in my daddy's house and you calling me a mighty man of valor? See, what Gideon didn't know, he didn't know his purpose. Let me give you the name of the meaning of Gideon's name. Gideon's name means warrior. Listen to this. His name means a mutilator. His name means he's a destroyer. His name means he is a contender. Means, amen, listen, that I am a warrior. I will, every opposing force that rise up against me, I will mutilate you. I will destroy you to the point of non-existence. I will, can, I will fight against you to the death. I'm not going to stop fighting against you. I don't care how long poverty has been over your family life for generation, for generation, for generation. I'm going to destroy you. Listen, I have been anointed to break the yoke that you had on my family. See, that's why Gideon was created. Gideon was created to break the power of the Midianites over the Israelites. He was anointed. He was created to destroy the power of poverty over the entire nation of Israel. And God is saying this morning, I have anointed you. This message is for Ellen Deficit and all of those partners that connected to Ellen Deficit. God is saying, there is an anointing on you to break the power of the Midianites over you. And I'm here to declare the word of God to you this morning. If you would believe that you are not some little weakling, or you would just stop looking at yourself as a victim and stand up on your feet and say that the spirit of the Lord is upon me and he has anointed me. Everybody stand to your feet. Stop looking at yourself as a victim. Stop thinking of yourself as a victim. Begin to decree and declare the word of God. I am anointed to destroy, hallelujah, this spirit of poverty and oppression and of lack over my family. I don't care where it came from. I don't care how it started. But today.
but you are the giver. You are the one that lifts up the baby. You are not the one, praise be to God, that's supposed to be begging, but you are supposed to be the one, praise be to God, that's lifting up the hands of the baby. And John at the gate called beautiful. Yeah. There was a bargain. Look what he said. He said, I ain't got no seven gold today, but something I have, I give unto you. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. Yeah. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Rise up out of poverty. Yeah. Rise up out of hallelujah. I pray it in the name of Jesus. All of hallelujah. Every person that's connected to every day to see, you've been struggling, you've been sowing, you've been giving faithfully. And it looked like, Lord, every time I put a seed in the ground, something always happened to it. In Jesus' name, that will not be your case going forward. You have an anointing to break this thing. And it's going to listen. It's going to come through discipline. You got to discipline yourself. You got to know who to worship. You got to know, praise God, the God that called you, praise God, hallelujah, the redeem of the Lord. Don't you know that you have been redeemed from the spirit of the Midianites? Don't you know, praise God, I don't care what warrant against you. God said you have been redeemed from that. The ransom for you have been paid already. I'm not just trying to give you information, y'all. But I want you to get this in your spirit. Break that curse. That's what we do. You got the power to do so. There's a spiritual thing that's happening here. Poverty is a spirit. You got to attack it with spirit. You got to attack it with spirit. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I need to decree and declare this word. I want you to repeat after me. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. Every seed that I put in the ground. Every seed that I put in the ground. Shall bring forth increase in my life. Shall bring forth increase in my life. And not the life of my enemy. Father, in the name of Jesus, I speak an abounding and overflowing increase in my life. I give you praise. I give you praise for the ground that I'm sowing into. For the ground that I'm sowing is good ground. Father, bless the ground in which I sow my seed. In the name of Jesus, I break up all of the foul ground, every rock, every hindrance that will prevent my seed from bringing forth increase, I remove it now. I remove it now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Satan. Satan. I command you. I command you. In Jesus' name. Jesus to remove your hand. Your hand. Off of my increase. Off of my increase. I command you. I in Jesus' name. Jesus to stop devouring. My increase. In Jesus' name. Jesus Glory name. be to God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're not done. We're not done. I am, I am a warrior. A warrior. I, am I am a contender. A I, will I will fight to the end for what's mine. I am, I am a warrior. A warrior. I, am I am a contender. A I will fight to the death for what's mine. In Jesus' name. That not only pertains to money, that not only pertains to that, but anything that God gives you, He put you as a store over. You gotta fight for it. You gotta fight to maintain it. You can't allow the enemy, amen, to just have it and just take it from you. No, you gotta fight it. You gotta fight for it. And what's happening? We've been rolling over and playing there. Praying day is 
from the enemy. And when he sees us, he'll just walk over and get what he wants and leave it. Leave out. No, you better rise up and you got to fight against that thing. In Jesus' name. Jesus name. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this word this morning. God, I know not God, but I thank you for what's been said, and I pray that it will receive. Father, I pray that they've heard me not only with their ears, but I pray that they've heard me with their spirit. Father, I pray that this word will be made clear and be made plain to them. Lord, everything that I said that they did not grasp with their mind, I pray, Father, that in Jesus' name, that their spirit caught it. Father, I pray in Jesus' name that if I misspoke in any way, I pray that the spirit of interpretation, oh God, will be rest upon your people, that they have to that they will be able to interpret it and understand it. Lord, in Jesus' name, Father, I pray for clarity of understanding in the minds of your people. I pray, Lord, that they will come to the realization that the spirit of poverty, amen, hallelujah, is not a permanent state of being. I pray, Lord, in Jesus' name, that we will not become so accustomed to being in poverty that we just want to lay down in it and rest in it and sleep in it the rest of our days. But I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, that we will just rise up out of it, take a stand and say,
about the two men that they killed. And he said, what did you say of them? He said, well, they responded back to Gideon. He said, they said, when we saw them, they look as you are. They look like kings. Your enemy knows who you are. That's why he is fighting against you the way that he is fighting against you. He knows that you are the prince of God and the princess of God. He knows that you came from a lineage, a spiritual lineage. You have a spiritual inheritance that surpasses everything that the enemy can bring against you. That's who you are. They know that it runs in your family line from the king to the son to the sons. Glory be to God. You may be seated. Hallelujah. What time is it? Amen. Praise God. So the kindness can be doing this thing something. Amen. Glory to God. I pray that you all got something out of this. For every name that we're named, uh, that we called out this morning, amen, that laid around and prayed before worship started, I pray in Jesus' name that that, 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 that prayer that she prayed and all of us was in agreement with that prayer, the work is already done. Amen? Amen. Amen. I just thank God. I pray you all. I'm done. Thank you. I pray that you all got something out of this word this morning. I, I know I jumped, skipped, and hop, but I'll break it down on Tuesday night in a more informed manner um, that, that, you know, I can teach it from a better place 